Good morning. In the early days of the uprising in Egypt, I found myself in a hidden apartment overlooking Tahrir Square in Cairo, photographing these young activists organizing protests、uh, or rallying on the streets to voice their opinions. They often clashed with cops to call for the downfall of a dictator who had ruled for over 30 years. They worked day and night, and often anonymously. Perpetually in fear of being targeted, been targeted by the Mukhabarat, which is the Egyptian secret police, they were notorious for arresting protesters and silencing all dissent. Being a photojournalist, I photographed this scene, and I was afraid for the safety of these kids I was, I was shooting. And I asked them, "Is it okay to reveal your identities? Because once we publish this, everyone will see this." Omar, the boy in the middle, he told me. We've already reached the point of no return. If this revolution fails, we will be targeted and we will be arrested. So do whatever you want. This was published the next day, and fortunately, none of them got in trouble, except for one. This girl on the bottom right, her parents discovered through this photo online that she smoked, <laughs> and so authoritarian dictators and angry parents actually have something in common. And、um, needless to say, revolutionaries can be grounded too. <laughs> and so it was there, sitting with these activists, that I realized I was being—I was sitting with peers, and their grievances really began to resonate with me. And while we may be cultures apart, their story was a shared story. It wasn't just a story about a revolution, but it was a story of, of a generation. And these are the youth who brought it to life, shouting slogans in Tahrir Square. Or hunched over the bluish glow of laptops, arguing online all night about everything from feminism to political candidates. This is a generation that's now bound up in protests in a way that we've now seen all over the world. And as a journalist, it's my job to give them the voice. I'm not an activist. I'm not an advocate. I don't take sides. It's my job to be neutral and report this. But at the same time, I can't ha- I can't hide what I feel. And as the more I spent time with these young activists who faced arrest or torture for challenging the government, I was touched and humbled by the conviction of my peers, witnessing their bravery and their willingness to put everything on the line. Their story began to mirror the same issues, frustrations, and insecurities that I felt. And then you see, what I realized was that the youth are the entry point to any culture. We're the ambassadors representing the future, the dreams, and the aspirations of the people. We have not yet been resigned to the status quo, and universally, we're still finding our places in the world. And while we still face a lot of issues like lack of access to education, unemployment, or political atrophy, we are still of the age where we believe that anything is possible. And technology has made the conversation global. And the last year has been a mirror to ourselves, no matter where we come from, no matter what culture, reminding us we're not that different. And when pushed to extremes, cultures, language, religion, and prejudices dissolve into one raw collective humanity. Even during times of civil unrest, a smile is still a smile, and a joke is still a joke. And the need to freely express our thoughts will never be silenced. These are political caricatures drawn at a time where something like this could get you arrested. This is a young activist who was killed by military police during a protest. This is the worried mother of a son who was arbitrarily detained and disappeared by the military. Something that still occurs to this day. And so it's on those extremes that the best and worst of human nature really comes out. Twenty-year-old Maria Mawaghazi was beaten so badly by the military during a protest, but even as she sat at home nursing her wounds, she was still worried about studying for her, for her university exams the next day. Twenty-three-year-old Sarah Abdelrahman films on a way. Outside to a protest, she has a blog where she makes her videos for tens of thousands of followers online around the world. And so, what I found is that the world is a smaller place, and we've never been more connected. And what we witnessed in the Arab Spring spoke to a universal need for justice and equality. Wherever we are, the most important thing for us is to be active citizens, no matter where we are, to have an opinion, to take a stand, and for the causes that you believe in. You, as an individual, have an amazing power to change things. You have a voice, and we have an obligation not to take our freedoms for granted because there's because there's still so many people fighting for theirs. And freedom of speech is a privilege, and it's our duty to be informed, to help others, to voice our opinions, and work to make our communities, wherever that is, a better place. Thank you. <laughs>